Hey guys, and welcome back to the JTO channel. And this is your Group B review, the second day Group B, the group that contains Spain, Italy, Croatia, and Albania, the group of death, as people have said. And wow, wow, wow. I mean, the ending of that game, um, the Croatia Italy game, wow. Wow. I mean, the fact that just one goal can just change absolutely everything is just crazy to me. And it looks like after that dagger, once again, I must say, like, do you know what it is here, guys? In yesterday's video, I talked about how underwhelming the Scotland-Hungary game was in terms of just a lack of quality. And I talked about the Germany-Switzerland game, how I gave Switzerland a lot of credit for their performance. But the game in general just lacked quality, wasn't entertaining. You know, neither of the games yesterday were entertaining, but it's the same again tonight. Neither of the games were entertaining. But considering what was riding on it for at least in one of the games, A, even though it was underwhelming, there was yet again another dagger. First, it was Hungary yesterday, where they scored the goal to send Scotland out and potentially and very likely put themselves through to the round of 16. And then you've got tonight. Croatia, they've got the goal. Luka Modric has got the goal he deserved. Yeah? And Zakanyi. Zakanyi's goal breaks their hearts. I mean, let's just be honest now. That goal likely sends them out. And I'm going to get into why it does later on. But that is a dagger, man. Another late goal, man. So far, back-to-back -back late goals. Like I said, it was Hungary yesterday. Today, it was Italy. That has saved them. Um, from uncertainty in terms of if they did lose this game and finish third, you wouldn't have known. They wouldn't have known whether they would have gone through or not. They probably would have, but they knew they couldn't take that for sure. You know, they had to definitely get a goal. And the one moment of, of quality that they had, boom, it goes in the back of the net. So, yeah, let's just talk about the Croatia-Spain um, game. No, the Croatia-Italy game first because there was a lot more on it. And there was a lot more on the line. The Spain game, look, they did what they had to do. It was against Albania. It was 1-0. Spain, yeah, we'll get into them later on in the video. But Croatia, um, Italy, look, it wasn't a great game in terms of the first half, at least. Like, very boring, very underwhelming. Um, you know, not enough quality on both sides, considering the caliber of players we're talking about on the pitch. You know, Croatia have the likes of Modric, Kovacic, Brozovic and players like that, Guvardio at the back, um, you know, Perisic came off the bench, players like that, good players, you know, Italy have some talents there like Barella and Calafiori, experienced players like Jorginho and players like that, Bastoni, Donnarumma, you know, so for, you know, De Marco as well, even Italy's like setup was weird, they play like a back five, they play like a, like a, like a three stroke five at the back, Three in midfield, two up front. Very negative from Spalletti, which is kind of surprising considering the type of manager he is. And, you know, the way he had that um, Napoli side playing when he won the league was very, very good. So it was just surprising seeing him set up like that. So it is what it is. It was a boring first half, not a great game. But the second half comes along and I must say, um, you know, Croatia just upped the tempo just a little bit when they needed to. And it starts off with them getting a penalty. Now, look... Um, it was close proximity in terms of where how quickly um, the ball hits the hand. It wasn't one of those ones where it was far out. Um, it was pretty close, the action. Um, it's handball for me. And the rules have it also as handball. So it kind of is what it is from that perspective. Look, the Croatian player hits the ball. Fratetti, he, he, he tries to block it, but his hand is just out here. And it just hits his hand and look, once it does so clearly and the ref goes to look at it, it was always going to be given as a penalty. Harsh on Fratetti's point of view, but it's a pen, man. It is what it is. And you think to yourself, Modric, you know, big player, big game, a lot riding on it. You think to yourself, players turn up, the big players turn up in the big moments when your country, when your team needs you the most. And you're thinking to yourself, Modric, he surely bags this, but then you forget. You know, for as much as Donnarumma is a bit of a shaky goalkeeper nowadays, he is a very good, he's very good at penalties, Donnarumma. He's, he, hey, he can save penalties for fun, innit? You saw what he did for Italy at the Euros all the way back in um, 
2021 against the likes of England and, you know, nations like that. So he made a very, very good save, man. And at that point, the, the Italians just weren't focused. I don't know why, you know, they should be happy. They should be energized for that little bit longer, for that extra minute or so. But they're just not concentrated. Croatia still are playing their game. Eventually, um, number 25, I think it was, for Croatia, puts the ball in the box. Um, Donnarumma makes another great save. Tries to get up quickly. It falls to Modric. And he just puts in the back of the net. Not an easy finish, considering he's running away from goal. Um, his body is like, the goal is here, and his body is to the side of it as well. So, you know, when his body's to the side, and the goal's here... And he's trying to hit it. As he turns, it's not an easy finish to, to accomplish. So fair play to Modric, you know. And like I said, big players. He missed the penalty, but he that, that didn't phase him. Big players turn up in big moments. Yeah? If you're a world-class player, if you are a big player, like Luka Modric is, yeah? When, you're, when your country needs you in moments like this, in games like this, you must. And he did. He must. And he delivered. Um, so, yeah, fair play to him. Good finish. Hits into the roof of the net. And at that point, Italy, you know, I wouldn't say they were panicking, but they were definitely in a position where they were like, OK, we have to go for the game. Because like I said earlier, even though three points would have been likely enough for them as a third place team for them to go through, I just think they couldn't take that chance in it. And I absolutely hear it. I absolutely understand. They couldn't take that chance. And they didn't. So um, they just lacked quality. The game's going on and on and on and not really creating chances. Chiesa's trying to do something, but his teammates are not doing anything for him. He's getting frustrated. Spalletti's bringing on more substitutes. He brought on Skamaka. He brought on another player. I forgot his name. He brought on Zakanyi as well, who scored, who scored the equaliser. And you think to yourself, as this game goes on, Italy don't look like they're going to score. They, don't, they just don't look like they're going to score at all. They don't even look like creating a chance. And then all of a sudden, Calafiori is in the middle of the park. He's driving with the ball, yeah? He does a one-two with his teammate. Drives it into the edge of the box. He lays it off to Zakanyi. And Zakanyi, first time effort. The second I saw it left his boot, I knew that was in the back of the net. The second it, I swear down, guys, the second it left his boot, I knew it was in the back of the net. Calm, composed, you know, he didn't put, he didn't even put like power into it because the power was already in the past. He just had to redirect the ball. He calmly slotted it in the back of the net. Brilliant finish. There's nothing Levakovic, the, the Croatian keeper, can do about it. And that breaks their hearts, man. And, um, you know, big goal for Italy. Big dagger. Just like Hungary yesterday. Dagger. That sent the Scottish out. This is the dagger that likely sends Croatia out. I'm not going to say it does send them out for definite. But it's very, very likely. I've looked at the tables of the other groups and look. It's very likely they're gone. They don't have more points than Hungary. Right? So, and I said Hungary are likely to go through with their three points. Um, Austria have not even played yet. And they've got more points. And Slovakia are the team currently in third. In their group with Belgium, Romania and Ukraine. And as it stands, they have more points. So you've got one team that has more points. And has played the same amount of games in Hungary. And you've got two teams in Slovakia currently. Who are currently third as we speak. And you've got Austria who are third in their group. Those two have not even played yet. And there are more points than Croatia. And like I said, there's six groups. And four third place teams. Only four out of the six third place teams go through so if croatia want to stand a chance of going through they have to hope for two things for them to be that fourth team one they have to hope that england tomorrow i'm pretty sure england play tomorrow england tomorrow beat slovenia by at least three goals because currently croatia's goal difference is minus three it's minus three currently and Slovenia's goal difference is currently zero. So they have to hope England beat Slovenia convincingly by like three goals. Now, can England do that? They're definitely capable of doing it. But mm, will they do it? We don't know. We'll wait and see what happens. So that's the first hope they have to have. That's the first thing. 
And then the second hope they have to have is hope that Czech Republic and um, who's the other team in their group of Portugal and Turkey? Czech Republic and Georgia don't get any points against Portugal or Turkey. I've not checked their goal difference, but I'm pretty sure with Czech Republic, their goal difference is better than um, Georgia. And I'm, pre so, and I'm pretty sure Czech Republic face Turkey. So if Czech Republic get a point against Turkey, they will likely go through as the fourth, um, third place team. Because I'm pretty sure at this point, one of whoever finishes third out of Belgium, Romania, Slovakia, and Ukraine in third, whoever finishes third out of those four teams, they will probably go through. They probably will. And for me, Hungary have more points than Croatia, so they, they're going to go through. Austria, I think, regardless of what happens tomorrow, will go through as well. So that's them. So those are those two teams. Um, and like I said, the um, so Hungary, um, one of Slovakia, Belgium, Romania, and Ukraine, and you've got Austria, or potentially the Netherlands if Austria do beat them. So Croatia can be that fourth team, but they mainly have to hope England beat Slovenia by three goals at least. If that doesn't happen, they're out. And obviously they have to hope Portugal and Turkey do win, definitely win against Georgia and, um, well, not Georgia, because Georgia on zero. No, no, no. They're, aren't they on a point? Yeah, they are on a point, I'm pretty sure. They just have to hope Portugal and Turkey just do their jobs against Czech Republic and Georgia. So let's see what happens. I don't know. I think it depends on England. It, it really does depend on England. I can't lie. Because I think Turkey will beat Czech Republic. I think they will. And I think Portugal are going to beat Georgia. So it really depends on England, Slovenia. It's that one. Let's see what happens. There's a chance they go through. Small chance, but we'll see, man. So, yeah, um, that's it on Croatia. They finished third. They're the team that look likely to go out, but we'll see what happens in the other group games that will determine their fate in this competition. Italy, big point for them. They go through on four points, so they will now go through to the round of 16 where I'm pretty sure they face... I'm pretty sure it's Switzerland because second place from Group A will face second place from Group B, is it? I might be wrong on that, guys. Don't um, trust me on that, but we'll see what happens. We'll see who they face in the round of 16. We'll obviously do a review for that game whenever that comes about. And obviously Spain. Spain win their game of football. Um, they beat Albania 1-0. It was actually a well-worked goal. Um, Laporte breaks the lines with his pass to Olmo. Almost slides in Ferran Torres. Ferran Torres, it's such a good pass that he doesn't need to take a touch. He just hits it first time with his left foot, posting in. And yeah, Spain get the win. Albania, they tried. Just like in the other two games, they did really try. And I do feel sorry for them because you know what? At the end of the day, they were put in the toughest group. And for me, there are so many teams that are in worse groups. There, sorry, there are teams that are not better, but are in easier groups than Albania. And they're likely to go through. Do you know what I mean? As a third place team, for example, or even second. So I do feel sorry for them, man. Um, they they did they they put up an effort, they put up a fight. Um, and they had their moments, man. You know, the two two draw to Croatia that was a big moment for them. Scoring twenty three seconds in against Italy was something. You know, Albania fans are probably like, take me back to that, take me back to the first thirty seconds, first minute against Italy, because they were they were on cloud nine, man. Then so. Yeah, unlucky Albania. Um, and yeah, you know, that's about it. Spain, they changed personnel a lot. Um, the only player that um, started, that played in their last game was Laporte. They changed the right back, didn't play. Cucurella didn't play. Carvajal didn't play. Um, when I Simon didn't play. Um, Rodri was suspended, so he couldn't play. No Pedri, no Nico Williams, no Morata, but he came on. Yo, no Lamal starting. But he came on. So, very changed team. You saw the likes of um, Hosolu and Marino and Zuba Mendy and Grimaldo and Raya and goal and stuff like that. You know, it is what it is. They get the job done. Um, very impressive. Nine points out of nine. They topped the group with ease. Um, no goals conceded. And they scored about five goals, I'm pretty sure, because two one nils and a 3-0. So, that's five goals, zero conceded. Three out of three wins. Nine points. 
what more could you ask for? I heard this stat that the last team to have won all three of their games and kept a clean sheet in all three games was Italy in the last Euros and they went on to win it. Is this it's is this Spain's year? Hmm. Hmm. Let's see what happens. But yeah, that um that's now group B done. Spain topped the group, just as I expected in my predictions video. I did say Spain would top the group, got that bang on. I thought Croatia would finish second, and they were they were third. I was 30 seconds from being right. I was this close to being right, guys. Um with Spain, with um Croatia finishing second, but they didn't. Um, it was Italy that finished second, um, but I had Italy finishing third, I had Croatia finished second, and obviously Albania were always going to finish bottom, unfortunately. So, yeah, that's it for your video, guys. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Tomorrow, you'll be getting two videos where we do um, a Group C and a Group D review because Netherlands and France, um, they play Poland and um, Austria. Uh, tomorrow and England play tomorrow as well against Slovenia so yeah you'll be getting two videos tomorrow reviewing those groups and see how that pans out so yeah guys I'll see you lot tomorrow hope you guys enjoyed the video and yeah see you lot guys see you lot guys am I a madman am I all right is my English all over the place anyway I gotta shoot see ya bye